You are watching Mental Health Mondays, brought to you by the good people at Connected Mental Health Initiative. I got my good friend, Chuck Bassey. Chuck, what's going up? Like, I'm feeling it today, Goosh. Like, look at this. I got the whole vest the inside. Got the little pup going here. You know why? You know why I'm dressed like this? Because uh, I, 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 I think you want me, want me to help you dress, because that is sharp. No, sharp. We tried to get our producer to come back and play sharp dress, man, but apparently we get pulled down for copyright infringement. Well, and you know exactly what? where I was going with that. We did that the other week, and we got a warning, like a stiffed warning. So we've got to actually yeah. figure it all out. You know, podcast, video podcast, you just think you can do anything. And they've done a great job, as you know. Thank you, Jordan, for joining us, Val. They've done a great job doing it, but I think we now have to, because we're starting to get known, I think we better start on a couple of the rules. Yeah, and today especially because I do not want this show getting pulled down as well because I've been stalking this guy for well, a solid a five years. Chuck, just hang on a sec. Uh, Jordan, can you uh, put that disclaimer up, please? <laughs> That's oh, it, guys. Hang on. I got to turn my brightness on. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, seriously, I know uh, this is a very serious show. Well, we call it Mental Health Mondays, but serious does not mean you can't have fun. And I think the next yeah. guest that you've, you've had some incredible guests. I'm looking so forward to this dude, uh, Barry White Jr. Uh, it, it, he is, I love his energy. I love his, um, just his whole demeanor. If yeah. I was going back to school, that's my teacher. That, that, I yeah. would be... I, I love it. I absolutely. And, and before be, before we get into this too soon, like I, what I want to do is like, if you haven't seen Barry White Jr. and you, you've been living under a rock for the past five years, about 2016 or so, he became a Utah phenom, uh, sorry, YouTube phenom for being the handshake teacher. And, uh, you know, he was on Steve Harvey, like Good Morning America, all the big shows as well. He went boom in like literally 48 hours. Uh, being a school teacher at Ashley Park in uh, the Carolinas in Charlotte. Uh, thank you, Don McCarthy. <laughs> but what I wanted to do is to save us a little bit of time is to be able to see uh, the video of the YouTube video that went that went viral so everyone can catch everybody up to speed. Yeah. So if we can play that video now, Jordan, and roll that. And uh, this is our intro. She's Barry White Jr. One of my oldest when she was in fourth grade. Yeah, she was she was Just hang out with me before she went into her day. One day she's like, Mr. White, let's, let's do a handshake. I said, okay. Put the arms on that guy. A little handshake, a little fist bump. And over time, I just noticed that she was oh my God. She with me today. It was something that she is. Look at her shoulders. She was looking forward to the outfit. A simple He's greeting. Been a best impeccable. Too. So that's impeccable. That's a thing. So, what if I can emulate this with my entire fifth grade class to give them that same feeling that, hey, I'm excited to see you. I want you to be excited to see me. Let's do this thing. Let's get pumped up. Yeah, this is crazy. I watched There's the jam right there. Yeah, I've never been that cool in my entire life. Like, ever. Well, we, we just just, just got to look at your hair. I'm thinking about everybody yeah. in general who has a handshake. Look at that. They know I care enough about them. And they're just grooving too, eh? And they're having fun. They're loosey goosey. It's like they're before game time. They make aspect of a student. I love that. It will is game time. You know what? You got to make it fun. And Barry's done that for sure. The over because I'm at a young age. Uber. That blossom, let that continue to grow. Are they gonna take what you instilled into their character you know, with them into the world? And I can't wait to be that old guy with a crane, probably in retirement home, going, There go my babies. Like when you see you on the TV, you're doing amazing things. It is a different side to teaching than just being stressed out for test scores or as like who's this Taylor? Like Look, that. I'll tell you what, how he good is she? He's in, he'll be doing this in the 90s. Of course, he will. There he is. Original simply means Give me some attitude. Being true to who you are. At the end of the day, wow. we have to embody. That is so much fun. Just make it your own. That's human connection right there, baby. It's okay to be uncommon. I love it. Boom. I watched the one that you sent me last night or the night before. I, honestly, it took 20 minutes to get the kids in the class. He was doing yeah. everything. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. So without further ado. I got a full night here, Goosh. I can do this all night with you, but I got yeah. a really important guest I got to get to. Yeah, Without further ado, Barry White Jr. Hey, what's Barry? going on, Chuck? How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm doing better now that you're here. 
Hey, listen, before I'm going to, I'm going to get off because I want to sit and watch this. I just want to do a compliment to you, Barry. Unbelievable what you do for us to brighten our world. The only issue I've got right now is that once we get out of pandemic, uh, are we going to still be able to do handshakes? But I'm sure you'll come up with something just as creative. I want to just say a thank you from all of us for what you do and inspire us to be better people. Uh, man, good on you. Great, great looking it, outfit. Too. Great looking outfit. <laughs> Thank you so much. I tried to match Chuck. I appreciate it. Okay. Hey, Chuck, you have a great show. Really excited about this one. We'll see you in the back end, Goosh. So now I've got you now, young Skywalker, and you're in my <laughs> you're you're on my show finally. I've only been stalking you for five years. I know and, we're uh, finally here. <laughs> I know you're finally here. But listen, I don't want to I don't want to uh, waste any more time because I got so much content that we want people to take away from the show tonight. Um, but uh, one thing I wanted to start off with is I, I watched your video uh, about 2016 or so, and, and immediately I'm like, I got to have that cat on my show because that's a guy who just gets it because, like, everything that you said and did, you know, just screams human connection. And I think, you know, I'm 49, so a little older than you, but uh, my generation came from the standpoint of an education level where my dad was in the armed forces and he just said, whether it's your coach or your teacher or another adult, if it comes out of their mouth, it's the same thing as coming out of my mouth and you just listen to them. And we don't live in that world anymore. And obviously you being an educator right now, uh, I want to ask you your take, you know, on communicating effectively with young kids. Now, obviously you've created this, uh, this niche, which is just absolutely brilliant. Um, but I thought you could speak a little bit more about your experience about that. Uh, and the effect it's had and the impact it's caused with your with your students. Absolutely, and I appreciate that, Chuck. And I think you hit it, you hit it the nail on the coffin when you talked about how you know in the old days it might have been, hey, um, if you go to school, you listen to your teacher, do what they say, and that's just how it's supposed to go, right? But nowadays, especially this new generation, you will find that it takes more, right? It's, it's not just about. I posted this the other day. I said, ask um, educators, do students follow your position? or your passion, right? Because that's important now. Like it's important that students believe that you actually believe in them and more than what they can uh, produce for you, you know, as far as academics go and test scores and assessments. It's about building that connection. If you don't have that trust and that love and that respect between each other, then they're not gonna wanna learn from you. So that whole adage of, they don't have to like me to learn from me, that's that's out the window. Like whoever said that, it was completely wrong. They, your students should love you, they should like you, they should want to be in your classroom they should want to come back to you right and that's what it, it really comes down to and what it was about as far as building connections finding a way to connect with them that's outside of me telling them what page they need to turn to in the curriculum right or following uh some script it's really uh so it really just comes down to making sure that we have that one-on-one -on -one personalized relationship before i bring them into the classroom to try to teach them something that um you know that academically i'm supposed to improve and you use the word relationship there. And I think, you know, life is just about a collection of relationships. Like you and I are in a relationship right now on this show right now, you go outside, you're gonna have relationships wherever you go, whether it be intimate relationships, business relationships, community relationships, church relationships, anything in that side as well. Uh, what have you found inside connection where you've been able to reach that elusive child or a non-neurotypical child who normally just wouldn't get that attention, wouldn't be able to garner that relationship that your stepping stone has now bridged into, now you're able to deliver your content because you have to have content as well. You have to have icing and cake. You know, I'll, I'll use the analogy of the dance and the handshake to be the, the icing, uh, but then you've got to deliver your content. So can mm -hmm. you speak to the relationship and how that juxtaposition works for you to get them in with the hook? Absolutely. Um, I, I say this a lot that, you know, you can't expect students to invest in the content you're teaching until they invest in you as the teacher. Right. So it really comes that back to just uh, making sure that you build um, that connection like one on one, because you think about it, as you said, not every child is different. So not everybody is going to be as open or be special, um, you know, based on cultural backgrounds so family and family values influence how um students express emotions and we all got all these different social expectations um based on race ethnicity all these different things so it's my job to make sure that i have done my homework that i've done enough work to find out okay let me find out more about this child other than their name you know maybe their parents phone number 
And uh, let me actually sit down in the cafeteria. Let me sit at a recess. Let me talk with them, listen to the conversation they have to figure out, okay, what are they into? What do they like? What interests them? And then let me ingratiate myself into that zone to kind of bring my, so I'm going to them instead of forcing them to come to where I'm at. Because I'm already established. I have different my tools and my toolkit. It's about building them up and not just academically, but making sure that they have good, you know, sound character and good judgment going forward. Yeah, well said, man. Well said. Um, Jordan, I want to bring up that clip that we have for the second YouTube video. Can you roll that right now, the one on relationships? There we go. So walk us through this, Barry. Yeah, so here you see how uh, my babies. You see, um, this is like <laughs> my first, this is the first handshake line. You know, I did it for like two, three years. But um, you see in some of those, a lot of my students actually was on a step team that I had uh, started to actually part. So we made sure that I wanted to personalize their movement or their handshake based on what they like. So you see us doing steps. Like uh, this one of my steppers right here, you see us doing a step right there. She was part of my step team. That's what she liked. Some of my students were a little more shy, you know, so we'd do something like a little head nod, as you see there, just something smooth. You know, but I adapted to whatever they liked and what they wanted. And that's what brought the joy and smile to them. And that's what allowed me to reach them on a different level. Like my boy Dexter right here. Like I love, like he's my cool guy. He's my cool swag guy. So you see, he's smooth with it. Uh, you know, just adapting to them, man, and making sure that I gave each and every one of them their own special moment so that they knew that they were special to me. A genuine human being in life. I think that would take them farther than any academics or anything else can take them. Brilliant. Wow. Um, I, I want to I wanna ask you, before we get started as well, I mean, like every, I believe every kid has a gift. Uh, you know, we, we had uh, Dr. Russell Barkley on last week. He's one of the world-renowned um, experts on ADHD. We talked about non-neurotypicals. Um, and one thing that Dr. Barkley said last week, he said that every child, especially with ADHD, has a special gift inside of them. And that we have to find that gift, be able to get them coaching and mentoring, and then be able to get them diagnosed in that side. And that's how that works moving forward. Uh, you've done the first two right there with, with your gift as well. You, you've identified this gift in the kid. You've been able to give them coaching and mentorship with that, um, which, I mean, on my side, it just it makes you a superhero. Because, I mean, I, I really wish we could take the, uh, the celebrities and rock stars and athletes away and, and, and superimpose them with teachers because I know everyone watching here right now has had at least one teacher in their life that they connected with that just saw the beauty inside them before, or the gift in this case, uh, before they were able to see it for themselves and they nurtured that person as well. So I guess what I'm asking you about is when, when you see that gift and you're able to give them that ability to, to see the greatness of themselves, what do you see steps out of that child now differently then, um, you know, if you didn't do that and you didn't believe in the kid? Well, one, um, you, you hit it on the nail on the coffin again. Uh, every child has the ability to win, right? When I say win, I, I mean in a broad aspect, in all aspects, right? Gr socially, emotionally, academically, um, in a personal lives, in a personal growth. So I see uh, from just the beginning to the end of my uh, classroom year as an experience. And I want to make sure that whatever experience that these students have is something that's going to be memorable, it's going to be positive, and it's going to impact them going forward. So we know they probably forget, uh, you know, all the students I've taught, they probably forget 70% of what I taught them, but they're going to remember how I treated them and how I treated others around them, right? And that's something that they're going to take with them. So when um, you see the growth from the beginning of the year, just let's say take a child that may have been a little shy first off, right? They, they might not have been as expressive because of whatever background they have. Then you see at the end of the year, after having that experience, after getting that love and poured into them, invested that energy and time, that personalized relationship, they are more open, they're more confident, right? A lot of times you see that students take on the personalities of the teachers that they love. So I know um, back in Ashley, when I was Ashley Park teacher, yeah, um, uh, we used to have competitions, right? So uh, just in school, just to get, you know, excitement, all that good stuff. And I'm super competitive, but then you will see my students as I'm walking down the hall, my chest boasting, my students right behind me, their chest boasting up, and we walking around like my uh, my you know my old people actually Park Prince would all of tell you like it just be amazing. We all be we move as one. Now that's what the purpose was to move as one unit to make sure each person 
they they grew in some aspect. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just academically. That's going to come. That's going to come naturally. But I wanted that a character. It could have been they um, only spoke to a few people in the beginning of the year. Now they're the life of the party. Right now they're they're more vocal. They're advocating for themselves. Each grow or each growth point is a win for me, and that's why I say all of my students that I uh, come in contact with has the ability to win, and they will win with that right mentorship, like you talked about, and that right guidance. And, and and I love the fact that you were able to find your gift to pass on to other kids. If, if you're watching this right now and you're a teacher, or you're a coach or a manager of people, um, it doesn't have to be what Barry White Jr. does. Find your gift, figure out what that is for you. And because every single teacher is not going to have, you know, the step class background or the handshake background that, you know, Barry brings to the table. So whatever it is, like find the one thing that works for you, teacher, and then be able to extend that out there with love and compassion to your kids and then find your tribe, and then they will gravitate to you just the same way as I, I find your, your students have done to you as well. Um, Barry, I want to ask you, what was school like for you? I, I, I guess you grew up in Queens, yeah? Yes, I grew up in Queens, well, Queens, New York, yes. So tough place, uh, you know, especially being a socialist Canadian over here. But what was the school like for you growing up in Queens? And more importantly, who was the teacher there for you that groomed you, that got you to get this and understand and then deliver your content effectively to your kids? Absolutely. So uh, school for me was quite interesting. Um, I always, <laughs> growing up in the, my adolescent days and my you know, elementary and middle school, I was a bit of a, um, a word, like a, a nerd. Like I, I really was into my books, really was into studying. It wasn't until I got into, you know, high school that I really got into sports. And I started playing basketball, got on a basketball team. Then I kind of shifted, you know, got into the whole crowd and all the good stuff. But throughout that process, I remember vividly, um, I have, and even to this day, a teacher um, that I called Auntie, Auntie Smith, right? She was in high school. She was a counselor. However, I was in her room every day. Like me and my friend, the door was always open and it was always, she was always delightful. She always inviting. She, you know, in time we uh, made her frustrated. Oh, we just needed a moment. Hey, come on in. It was, she never closed the door on us. And I remember to this day, like even I keep in contact now uh, through Instagram, and social media, but she had a massive impact on me on, I just watched the way she treated other people, right? And how, um, how she treated all of us. It didn't matter what we were doing or what the reputation was. It was, you know, I have a good heart, come in, let's listen, let's talk. Let's let's go ahead and give you a, a safe space to be in. And really, um, and that meant a lot to me, especially uh, going through high school in Queens. Um, and then I also had a history teacher and social studies was my, I had a black male teacher, history teacher, and um, I know he, he was amazing. Like it was the first time I ever seen that. Like it's the way he uh, delivered content, the way he was deciding, the way you know he, he get uh, you know drew in everyone. It wasn't through an authoritative state. It was more so in um, you know a collaborative um, effort to really get everybody together. And we appreciate it. We enjoyed that, especially you know we teenagers trying to find ourselves and you know all the hormones and that's what we're going through. That that meant a lot. So uh, that definitely impacted me, uh, especially when I was in high school. And kind of shaped me and set me on the path where I wanted to go. When I knew that, you know what? Uh, when I go to college, I'm going to declare my major to be elementary education because I want to go that route. Um, I mean, the, the the one teacher that that got to you is one that got to me as well through my entire education. So I grew up in Vienna, Virginia, and my dad was in the armed forces, and uh, we spent time uh, in Northern Virginia as well. And, I had a grade two teacher, his name was Kim Dillard, and he was a tennis guy. And in between class, just like what you do with the handshakes, Kim taught us American Sign Language. He taught mm. us the alphabet. And you know, against the wall, we all have to line up and say, show me your A, show me your B, show me your C, show me your D. And then you know, that really, as a seven-year-old, really just bridged my interest into ASL. And I found out later I had a, a, a great aunt that was deaf, and I was able to actually pick that up. Um, I had a grade two teacher, you know, named Margaret Benthal. She's 92 years old. She's still in Sun City Center in Florida right now. And God bless her. She just gave me the space to write, you know, because I was into creative writing and uh, I've written three books since then, obviously, and I would have never done that without her. Um, I had a teacher in grade seven that just was just the most fantastic teacher of my entire life. And then after I finished high school, I was writing this novel and I sent it to her and it was 122 pages, Barry. It was pure shit. It was awful. I don't know how she read it. And she gave it back to me. And this is where the teacher part comes in because this is where you people, you teachers, you know, really find that slippery slope just to walk that straight and narrow. I said to her, if you give me this manuscript back and you tell me that it's crap, 
I'm going to believe you because you've read everything in the entire world. And if you bring this, if I, if I give you the manuscript and you bring it back to me and tell me that it was really good, I'm going to think you're full of shit. And I'm not going to believe a single word. And I gave her no space at all. And she gave me this back and she said, Chuck, books aren't written. Books are re rewritten. I'm 60 years old. I haven't put down 122 pages. Keep writing. And that was the most perfect, important thing because that enabled me to keep writing. And it took me years and years and years of writing. But if it wouldn't have been for that one teacher, I never, ever would have had that ever come out. And that never would have actually come out of me as well. I had a principal in Manitoba. And this is where I want to go with this because he could have gone harder on me. I was a nasty kid. I had 76 detentions in grade five one year. Uh, and I spent more time in his office than he probably cared for me for. But um, he was firm but fair. And then after I graduated out of a school, I realized that everybody said the same thing about the difference a teacher makes for a kid. You know, where you have the power to really punish them, but you don't do that. He got me into student government. He got me into refereeing, you know, floor hockey games or soccer games. And he gave me more responsibility versus punishing me. And then when I got out of school, I put a, a scholarship award in his name. And I think every single person out there who sees a wonderful teacher in their life after they've left has no idea how the ripple effect of what they're teaching has done and has been able to replicate that out. So if anybody out there has the idea of actually creating an award or a scholarship offer or something like that in the name of a very white junior, you know, then get into the community right now, reach out to that school. Everybody can use a little bit more love, a little bit more honor. It'll save that person's entire legacy of what they thought they contributed versus what they didn't. So with that being said, I, I wanted to rant on that, but uh, I want to ask you about mental health awareness because obviously this is mental health Mondays mm -hmm. uh, and we need to speak a little bit more about obviously the pandemic has brought into, um, you know, it's eight, 16th month right now that we're going on to. What have you found as far as your curriculum? Obviously you can't do the handshakes and step anymore. What have you turned to as far as the connection now that you're using uh, as, as an administrator as well, uh, into reaching kids now uh, with the mental health aspects that we have. Yeah, um, before I do that, Chuck, can I answer and respond to what you just said a second ago? Uh, how you yeah. tell the story? How do you, so right there, like, I think that's perfect because like, I really believe in shifting from a goal-oriented culture to a growth-oriented culture. So what that teacher did was one, she was intentional, right? And strategic about it where she didn't stump your growth with a win or loss. So her whole idea was allow make sure that you continue to grow no matter what, right? And that, that's what I mean when I say growth oriented culture, because it isn't the one year that they get with me in my fifth grade class, and of course you know I continue with them. But that one year isn't about hey, did you get a, a um, eighty or a three or a four at the end of the year? Oh, it's a it's a loss if you didn't get that. No, it's about how much did you grow personally, right? That's that's your win. That's your small and big win. So I just wanted to uh, speak to that because that's amazing, man. And that's what I believe in Dang. and what I try to instill. And she did that for you. And I love hearing that when it's, you know, across the world that it happens, you know, every day. That's amazing. Um, yes. But to answer your question about how, you know, the, the epidemic and what I turn to now to build connections. So a lot of people always ask me, like, hey, so, um, yeah, man, so how, how's the handshake thing going now that, you know, once the pandemic and you can't touch and X, Y, Z. So I always say is for me personally the message was never about just the physical contact like that amplifies it that makes it more fun it makes it more exciting it was all it's still all about building connections so like you kind of alluded to earlier you don't have to have a handshake right it could be of the things that you do to utilize um that you know showing that how you build connection with your students so for example um this year we we're all we were all in uh, you know zoom world and remote learning land so how could we still, you know, provoke that feeling of, you know, love and investment and excitement for our students? So the very first thing I did as an administrator, the very first thing, new school, new people, all of this is myself and Carly, my running partner got, we got together and we um, created a um, read aloud, right? And we got everybody in the school. I mean, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, uh, secretaries, teachers, we got everybody in and we did a school read. I, I, um, we organized it, I edited it, put it together, and I put it out there for the students. And you should have saw the reactions that I got from families. Because for them, you got to think about, they didn't see their teacher. They haven't seen teachers since last March, 
right? Because they left in April, so they had they didn't get to finish seeing their um you know, their third grade or fourth grade teacher. So when they saw them on the screen, they face lit up. But that was the very first thing that I wanted to do was to bridge that connection, even though we're in remote setting. Well, how can we still um, you know emulate some feeling of that you know relationship and excitement from our students? And that's what um that's one of the things we did. Then also throughout the actual um right now even right now we make sure that um, each time I have what's called shining stars program where I want to have teachers they write a little verbiage or a little blurb about a student that they want to uh, spotlight and they put their name and and this little quick little sentence one or two sentences about that student and then we'll put it out to the families and community and what happens is the families and the moms and the guardians and everybody else they got an authentic voice from that student about their their child and that lift them up they become Oh my God, go! I'm so proud of you know. Just again, finding ways even in this remote setting to still build on them, and that's what we want to continue to do. You know, making sure that students' social emotional well being is still being um, adhered to, even though we may be farther away. Yeah, I know. I, I'm glad you said that because there, there's so many uh, red flags going on with our kids these days. You know, obviously the online learning, the lack of connection, they're not seeing their friends. Um, you know, and this has also a massive impact on the teachers because uh, let's be honest, like teachers are human beings first and teachers second. Uh, and what they have to deal with at home, you know, it's one of the, the most thankless jobs that you have to be able to put whatever you had at home on the side for a solid eight hours, show up at school, give your kids your absolute best, and then be able to leave and pick up your bag of issues that you got to deal with when you go home. And part two starts with that as well. And, and I always say we, we live on a starvation diet of acknowledgement. And I think every single teacher deserves to have that, um, that edification for doing what you do as well. Um, that being said, you need to have a team of people inside of a school system or a structure that's rather than promoting conformity, they're promoting creativity. And that vision has to come from the top. Is there ever been anybody, I mean, at Ashley Park, was there anybody there that groomed you or was able to give you that creativity or the green light? Because you went boom in 2016. That has to come from a certain level of leadership that allows you to be supported, you know, make sure the legality side is taken care of, the kids are represented, the parent, you know, the parents are okay with it, the adults. So who is that person for you? Listen, I I'm glad you said that. Like, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, every speech that I, or conference that I always go into, like I always mention like this person because what I always t tell a lot of my friends was, yes, you saw, you know, uh, what me and my students, you know, how we build connections and all the fun stuff we might did in, in, the, in the school, in the classroom, but I wouldn't have been able to do anything if I wasn't given a system of autonomy, if I didn't feel like I was supported within the culture and by my leader. So I know I had a leader, uh, my former leader, Ashley Park, uh, Megan Loftus. And when I say I, I, I learned so much um, from Ms. Loftus, just just off <laughs> one, just the growth and how she treated people. And as a leader, how you showed up in your presence, how you was always visible, but you was always visible with a purpose. Intentionality was a key, like a really strong for her, because uh, I remember one time and this was big for me. She came into class. You know, a lot of times the administrator come in the classroom and they may have a clipboard or, you know, they just may come watch and. You know, teachers tighten up. They get, you know, we get a little tense. Like, oh man, somebody watching. I don't want to get a bad ratings. X, Y, Z. So Megan came to my classroom and literally sat there, sat there uh, for a second, observed, then came to the board and said, "Hey, Miss White, you mind if I jump in?" And we started co-teaching. Like we actually started co-teaching together. And I sat there going, "Man, I didn't think of that. Why I didn't think of that point?" And it was consistent, like always. Even pulling small group, the principal. Now that I'm an administrator, I know what the schedule is like for an administrator, principal, and AP, all that good stuff, and it's hectic. Always, you're always getting pulled, somebody always needs you, but she made it a point to come, you know, I'm gonna invest in, you know, you and your students, and you know, my school, and that showed me a lot, and that impacted me, I said, that's what I wanna be. Now, I wanna make sure my presence is, is felt, I wanna make sure people feel supported, I wanna come in consistently, and um, you know, she did that for me, and I, I got so many lines that I took from her, like one of my favorites is, uh, uh, I'd rather ask for forgiveness before permission <laughs> any day. And I ran with that. I ran with that. So a lot of stuff you see, a lot of stuff you see, I just did it. And it was just, you know what? I asked for forgiveness later and it worked out. But anyway, regardless of the fact, uh, she gave me that sense of autonomy and that support. And I, and I felt protected in an environment that I could be creative. Because a lot when I talked to a lot of my friends and buddies, 
it's not always like that. Like the school coach is not always as inviting and, and you know, allows you to be your full self. And she did that for me. And um, like I said, I took away a lot from that. And uh, even to this day, I practice that in my new role as a school administrator, leading others. You know, Barry, like you're, this is just such a rookie move for you because like with social media being so prevalent with kids these days, you just never know who's listening. Yep. And so one of the things that uh, could have gone really badly, but you know, your back was slightly arched, but you stuck the landing. I'll give it a 9.5 overall uh, because we actually happen to have a special guest that's joining us in right now. And Jordan, why don't we bring that special guest in because someone was Barry. listening. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Barry, there. thank goodness you said my name. I was getting so nervous. My heart was beating so fast, but Chuck teed it up perfectly. That, uh, Barry, you walked right into that sting operation. You couldn't have actually hit that better. Everyone's like, this is so staged. There's no way they actually planned that. But man, you walked right into that sting operation, hook, line, and sinker. And you had no idea that we had Megan, you know, behind know, the scenes there. I know. Oh, hey, Barry, there. thank you thank so God much. You, thank God you said that. Yeah. Hey, that baby, hi, hi. I'm so good. It's good to see you. And oh my gosh, thank you for all those words. That just like made my heart so happy. Um, because I'm always proud of you, like always proud of you. Um, oh. so yeah, being able to connect like this is so fun. And I was so glad Chuck reached out and Carly did too. Oh, that's yeah, got me. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is you know, cool. if, I was, if, if I was Justin Timberlake, we'd just say you just got punked, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's basically the same. <laughs> you know what? You know what it is? I, I, Megan, I mentioned you so much in my new school, especially in the beginning of the year, on all the uh -huh. systems and stuff that we've done. Like, mm -hmm. I know they had to, they had to set it up. Like, I'm always yeah. referencing what we did at Ashley Park. Like, well, when you said, when you said, what is that? Or like, I reference line, she says, and then you said forgiveness or permission. I had a big laugh because I, yeah, I love that. It's my favorite. It's not mine. I stole it from someone too. I don't remember, but it are, they are words to live by, right? When it's like, yeah, what's it. best for kids or staff culture? You're like, yeah, forgiveness. It's, this is forgiveness stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so happy I get to see, also, I don't get to see, so Ms. Lopez is, is, is always out traveling, you know, traveling world, doing what she do. Mm -hmm. I don't get to run into a lot. So this is special. I, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, so special. Of course, it. of course. That is cool. Yeah, and I, just, just so everyone understands, if you're, if you're joining us right now, you just if you weren't in on the punk behind the scenes here, uh, Megan Lopez is the, the former principal at Ashley Park uh, mm -hmm. that actually curated Barry White's uh, internet blow up in 2016 and 17. Uh, Megan, I thought we'd start a little bit about uh, that role there. Uh, what you saw happen for uh, your school uh, under your tutelage, the teachers uh, that were uh, also under your, your your supervision as well, and and how that impacted you, your 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 students, and your teachers. Yeah. Uh, so. At Ashley Park, we had been focused um, on this balance of head and heart, we used to say, like head and heart at Ashley Park was our slogan. Um, and so that was always about a combination of high expectations and meaningful relationships for our kids. And so uh, Barry was, and I had you know, shared this earlier, so Barry and I kind of came in at the same time together, right? So uh, my first year as being a principal was Barry's first year teaching at Ashley Park. It was his second year teaching overall. Um, so we were kind of in it together with another cohort of teachers in a sense that we were working to figure it out and set um, a refined culture. We had a strong one already, but like what does revisioning look like? What do our kids need and deserve? Um, and how do I support staff to give them that? Uh, so by the time that Barry had um, the incredible like escalation of, of the handshakes, right? That was something he had been doing. That was just part of uh, who Barry was and is. And, you know, we talked about authentic relationship building and finding your joy and authenticity. So that was the perfect example of this idea of as a leader, you know, I want to create boundary and high expectations for kids. I also want to create space for people like Barry and anyone that's like needing and willing to step into it to find and cultivate their own joy, um, to learn and understand understand who kids are and what they need and then match that to what like gets them up in the morning. Um, so Barry handshakes were the best uh, representation of that. We had awesome stuff happening around the building. Um, and at the same time, um, that was his take. And it, and it was, you know, incredible. Um, so the, the biggest thing that I would say came from that, um, that I know Barry saw and understood and agreed with, was the insane and awesome sense of pride that his kids had, that all of fifth grade had, that the whole school had, and being spotlighted in that way. Um, and the way Barry talked about it with kids at center, not necessarily anything around, you know, 
like it, it was just not a gimmick. It was it was real and it, it, it felt that way and kids experienced it that way. So when then it was spotlighted, um, you know, they felt like a million bucks. So Barry, you you wouldn't you you would have like seen maybe video of it, but I will never forget the morning that we like, you know, um set up all the morning news screens to to channel you live, you know, like as you're as you're like giving handshakes to to Al Roker and kids were cheering and like I was in the academy in the middle school and it was just rocking. And and then you said you you talked about um, how you came up with the handshakes, but then you specifically said like, I'm just something like I'm just one of the amazing teachers at Ashley Park. And and it was so beautiful to watch you share credit and spotlight and pride. It made my heart so happy because it allowed every kid, like no matter the grade level, to be like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm an Ashley Park Eagle. So it was it was it was beautiful. Yeah, I could talk about it for a really long time, Chuck. So you you tell me what direction you want me to go. <laughs> well, you know, I want to segue that because I yeah, I I, I think as an educator. Um, as a parent, as a kid, when you get that one thing that you, you you feel heard, you feel understood, you feel respected, you feel acknowledged, you feel accepted, you feel loved, uh, the, the natural instinct for us as human beings is, is to hold on to that. And that's inherently the most selfish thing that we can really do is because that mm -hmm. needs to be shared and then, you know, on, on a grandiose level as well. So although it's sad, sad that Barry's no longer, you know, fifth, fifth grade uh, school teacher, you know, he stepped into an admin role right now, and now he's creating more Barry White Juniors out there. And that you, Megan, have like now duplicated yourself through leverage by creating mm -hmm. teams and pools of people that now have the Oprah Winfrey ripple effect of being able to get on the platform, share this with social media. And let's be honest, like, I mean, right now, this is the most amazing time that we need some light and some love and some understanding in our lives mm -hmm. uh, versus all the significance that gets overplayed with COVID. Um, and so your story was something that I just really gravitated to back then, five years ago. Uh, but now it's been something that I just wanted to play out as well. But Megan, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, so you're now uh, a consultant over at CT3 Education. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll put the website up as well uh, for people to check that out as yeah, well. Yeah, thanks. I, I wanted to give you a chance just to speak to the difference of what you've learned as opposed to a teacher of conformity to a teacher of creativity that Barry White and yourself have become that team uh, advocate, if you will, for young kids' educations, for their mental health and for their safety uh, and education and giving that mentorship and where that came from. Yeah, so I think that for me, the most formative experience I had was was teaching my own kids at, at Cocker Middle School in East Charlotte um, about 14 or so years ago and experimenting with who I was as a teacher, because I was a rookie and trying to figure that out and, and finding my own balance of what it meant to truly, truly authentically love my kids. And then also um, have hold all the space in the world to, to hold them accountable to their learning and to support them through it and to be a strong teacher of content. And uh, that didn't happen on day one. Uh, but once you start to get a taste of it, you're like, yeah, this is what when kids get excited and start to leverage investment in you to invest in self, it's a beautiful thing, right? So I feel like for me, I mean, I just had a really positive um, first few years of, of, of teaching experience that kind of gave me proof around what was possible, right? And, and I had an amazing team at that time and saw really strong staff culture at Cochrane. And so when I got over to Ashley Park and we were able to redefine that, what's ironic, and you're giving me a lot of credit with like, you know, saying, I don't think you drew an exact equivalent to Oprah, but like you threw her in there, right? So I just want to name uh, that for me, it's so much more about like once I gave, okay, so setting setting um, boundary and like, okay, guys, here's who we have to be for kids, period, right? So like, here's the model or the common language. Here are the common school values. Here are the common, you know, staff and student values. Um, here's the way we're going to operate in the cafeteria, right? Like giving giving a boundary to that and giving expectation to it, then allowed me to start to first of all see the need, but then also create space for. Um, I can't expect. I, I don't want to create a robotic system here. I want kids to feel seen and heard and have authentic, specific relationships with their teachers. And I couldn't expect that of them if I wasn't willing to also define their autonomy. So honestly, I just started to give more space to like, who wants to help me come up with an open house 
song or dance for our families or who we, we used to do Barry Nose and Project Lift, this roll call. And all I needed to do was like give give over the space to, to people to give over the responsibility. And I would like to think that because the boundaries were clear and the vision and mission of like what we were there to do and everyone being in it with like the same kind of intense heart for it, allow that autonomy to like just multiply, impact multiplied, right? So Barry was absolutely a huge part of that at our school. And part of legacy he's left is like, I now see, I, we still see teachers post videos at Ashley Park where it's like, yeah, like it, the songs and the dances and the chants and the excitement and the greeting at the door, like that's all happening in ways still that are specific to those teachers, but are also just part of that same energy um, that doesn't go away once people taste it. Uh, so yeah, once you find your balance and your authenticity and it, it's a really beautiful thing. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm just trying to like honor how I kind of arrived at even being able to <laughs> cultivate uh, some someone like Barry and talent. And the thing that I also would say, Chuck, about Barry that I like, uh, you, the video wouldn't show just it. And Barry, you, you know, let me dork out about this for a second. But the real beauty of what you did was you greet kids at the door and create like micro moments like we talk about, right? Where it's like deep connection with kids. They feel excited. They feel particularly seen. It's like just you're ramping up their threshold, right? So they go in and then Barry's got like a structure due now on the board, a timer. He's got every kid ready to show him what they learned the day before to drive his instruction for the day. And that was just as tight as the system to walk kids in. They're just two different sides of the same coin. So kids walk in excited, but then they bring the joy into like, and now I'm gonna show them what I learned from yesterday, right? And now I'm going to see what I'm gonna to learn today because I have like a diagnostic question. So Barry brought the same level of commitment to that kind of pedagogy that he did to the threshold at the door and the fun of the handshake. And kids feel that, right? Like they feel all of it and they're like, man, this person, is gonna make me successful, right? And so um, he was dogged about doing both of those things well. It wasn't just, I'm gonna make kids feel good. It was like, I'm also gonna show them what's possible um, and allow them to, yeah, to, to see themselves and their beauty and their potential and their excellence more clearly. Yeah, hey, we, Chuck, uh, did, Barry and I call that icing, icing and cake. Hey Chuck, can I, can I add on real quick? Just to yeah, what, uh, Megan, so what Megan, what, what she was talking about, and I just wanna like refine this also for everybody from teacher lens, was that infrastructure that she created. So yes, mm -hmm. I talked about the autonomy and allowing me to you know, everybody to be who they are because we, we was rocking Ashley Park. Like what school you know do donut dance offs on Friday mornings, sweating each hallway, teachers <laughs> are rocking, dancing before students get in. I mean, it was a really full culture, but the infrastructure I think that allowed a lot of that to happen was I never had to worry about, oh, well, wh what goes here? Oh, wh who's gonna do this, do what or do this because mm -hmm. it was all laid out even to minute to minute plans. Right. So I had security in knowing, OK, I knew what was next so that then all I can do is, um, as we like to say, you know, make it your own. So then I take what, you know, a system we have and then you, you tailor it toward who you are, you know, your authentic self and your students see that. But they also students also respond to structure. Right. So it was um, fun structure, chaotic structure, whatever you want to call it. But they were structured nonetheless. And we felt secure in that. So I just wanted to highlight that point as well. Like Megan was saying, it was intentional. It's intentional details all the way to the end. Uh, even yeah. be even throughout, you know, the fun and the excitement at Ashley Park. Yeah, it creates like a sense of predictability that kids need and deserve. All kids need and deserve, right? And so the systematic stuff allows kids to go room to room and not have to have to regulate like, oh, is this person, how is this person going to show up today, right? Like the systematic way of thinking kind of takes the distraction out so we can just focus right on the learning. Or if a kid's having an issue or a tough day, there's space for them to be acknowledged for that and be supported through that, right? You're not dealing with teachers that are are uber stressed, granted the work can be stressful, but are mm -hmm. like having to reinvent every single day. It's like, no, we, we, we streamline some things so you can do the other part, right? Um, so yeah, would, would echo everything Barry said too. I think the uh, the secret sauce of this is, uh, I, I deal in the NHL hockey world. Um, and uh, about four or five years ago, actually longer than that, I was interviewing uh, Ed Snyder. Mr. Snyder was the principal owner for the Philadelphia Flyers for almost 50 years. And six months before he passed away, I got a chance to go down to Philadelphia and interview him at one of his galas for the Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation. And he, I was supposed to get a, a half an hour with him. I got six minutes. And I took an overnight bus down there and an overnight bus on the way back to get that 30 minutes and I got six. And needless to say, I wasn't happy about it. 
But looking back in retrospect, he gave me the most invaluable tip in that interview that lasted six minutes. Um, and he said, Chuck, we use the Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation as the hook to teach these kids life skills. Because then once we get them in the building, then we teach them what dedication is. Then we teach them what commitment is. Then we teach them what hard work ethic is. Because life after hockey is going to find us all, some sooner, some later. But at the end of the day, we're not teaching hockey here. We're teaching these kids how to be successful life after hockey so they will be better students, they will be better entrepreneurs, they will be better spouses, they will be better in the business community. And he mentors, or he did, or before he passed away, and the foundation is still going, but 3,000 kids in South Philly that he would raise $2 million a year for. So what yeah. you're talking about is being able to deliver that content because happy worker, good worker, these kids come in, they have small ones under their belt, they've got that confidence, they know that someone's got their back. Because Barry goes, Megan has my back, and the chain of command goes down where he can now freely be creative, and the kids now can freely forget for whatever they are escaping for the next hour and just concentrate because they know the teacher has my back. They know the teacher cares about me, authentically cares about me, that the teacher takes this extra special time, which proves to me that the person cares about me and validates my prefrontal cortex of understanding do I feel love? Like Barry, when you said, in the very start of the, the, uh, the interview is, is do they feel better with you in your presence after you leave them? And that's exactly yeah. the difference between, you know, why your content is now being able to be picked up because there's zero distraction for the kid. He's not thinking about the lunch he didn't get or the parent at home that's being difficult or whatever. Because in that moment, he has that perfect escapism that you've connected with that kid's heart and be able to pull that out as well. So I want to be able to um, to talk to a couple of people on the on the comments on the side here. Jordan, can we pull up a couple? Here's Donna. So I'll, I'll defer this to you, uh, Barry. Uh, I'd be mm. curious to know how he thinks the pandemic uh, and homeschooling is going to affect kids. Mm. So so one, I think we're all aware that the pandemic um, is already been taxed. And on that, you know, students, but teachers are alike. And they're... they're I saw a study the other day, and I'm, I need to look up see how accurate it is. But it was from uh, one of the news articles that said the uh, um, the learning loss wasn't as uh, tremendous as it could have been because of how much educators was going above and beyond. Teachers uh, like whether it was remote or hybrid, they teach it both in the classroom. It decreased the um, the amount of learning loss, but nonetheless, there's going to be you know some impacts, and we might not see it right now. We might see it two or three years from now. And, you know, and, and kind of we'll from there, we'll take from there, see how that goes. But uh, as far as homeschooling, I mean, I get it. Like, I get why. That's why I want to I want to shout out to all the parents as well that uh, that acted as teachers, you know, whether or not uh, even if they weren't necessarily homeschooling every day, they were sitting by their child. They was helping setting up the Zoom. If we go to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they're sitting there every day going through, you know, the, uh, the activities with their child. So we all joined as one community. And I think. Um, us doing that um, definitely lessen how big of an impact, even though it's still going to be impact um, going forward. But uh, but I do think we know we we have yet to see what it will be. But I'm just thankful that we had educators that was and, and parents alike that was on one page going around, you know, above and beyond to you know push to extremes that we've never seen before. But they still rose to the occasion, right? Because like, like mm -hmm. you said earlier, teachers are heroes, and so parents are as well. You know, and we just come into one pot. Now we got our own Marvel, and that's what we had to be. We had to be a Marvel universe from the start to the finish in order to even get what we did get, you know, from our from our scholars and still make them feel appreciated and still at some level, you know, improve academically. So it, it's definitely going to be a, a tall task going forward, but I think well, I think we're going to live up to it um, nonetheless. And Megan, I'm just going to ask you the same question. Obviously, you you with CT3. Do you want to give us a little background of uh, what you're working on as well and uh, your insight to that? Sure. So I have been supporting leaders. Uh, I, I had my own CT3 coach, which is the, the reason I got connected to this awesome organization. So um, what I've seen and what I've supported and what I think the impact will be are all, all connected. Uh, I work with schools in, in Tulsa primarily right now and a couple in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I think that the intentionality that has always been true, you know, that, that we've always needed for our teachers and for our, our school cultures, like how we need to be able to remediate for where kids are, accelerate for those that are ready for more. That's always been, differentiation's always been, uh, you know, 
um, a buzzword. But the, the way we need to be able to drill down to do that, to honor the, the gaps that will exist, um, it's so possible. I, I've worked, all of the leaders I work with are capable of it. It's just about, to me, the way I'm supporting them is like summer planning to get that so ready to go in the fall. And, to out, and all the outreach that's that can exist right now in the summer, right? So um, we can lessen the effect by getting kids into strong summer programs that absolutely exist right now. So I'm, I'm finding myself kind of supporting and cheerleading leaders and like making those extra calls like day in, day out to connect kids to summer programming. So when they come in the fall, we're ready with a really systematic approach to reach all of their needs. Awesome. Um, there's a, a wonderful comment, Barry. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't actually, you know, bring up Sam Trampolino's from Australia. So he's actually watching this on you know, Mental Health Tuesday because, like, obviously the dateline's over on the other side of the uh, Pacific. But uh, Barry, uh, Sam says, uh, nope. Uh, Barry is someone who has had to find a connection with his teachers to be able to um, thrive. Your viral videos melted my heart and had me hope that more people are getting it. I'd love to know the impact you've had on these kids in the following 10 plus years. You can get it, man. So I think I said, we all, we all live on a starvation diet of acknowledgements and uh, every single one of those comments is gold to me. So uh, you I, well, that. I appreciate you that. that. I know um, me, me and Ma Alyssa, Megan, we're going to have to do a 10 year reunion somehow. We had a brief one. It, it might've been for the best reason, but we had mm -hmm. a brief reunion and that was amazing. But I would love to do that, you know, especially with some of our former students and just, you oh, know, it would be so fun. Mm -hmm. And Barry, they're all right there on Instagram and Facebook, like always asking to be friends, right? So our yep. kids are not are not far away from us. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I want to take a chance. Uh, sorry, take a minute just to ask you both. Um, I always try and give you know a little bit more time at the end of the show just to talk about who made you who you are. Obviously, it was Mother's Day this weekend. Uh, as well. So um, I, I know, uh, Barry, your, your, your mother's name is Joanne. Yes. Joanne White. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just wanted to kind of give you both a, a chance just to talk, take a chance to acknowledge, you know, who created both of you, who put in an extra time, who saw the greatness inside of you before you saw it yourself, uh, that you've been able to make this ripple effect and then uh, pay it forward. Barry, we'll start Ab with you. Absolutely. First of all, I'll say happy Mother's Day again, Mom. I know I don't call a lot, so she gives me a hard time every time, you know, I get a text. So happy Mother's Day, Mom, and happy early Father's Day to my dad. But uh, but yes, for me, um, it is my mom, and my dad. Like it's um uh, uh my dad, first of all, my if you if you ever got to meet my dad, I mean Megan, if you got to meet me once, think my dad, he is me times ten. Like I am a spitting every uh -huh. mannerism, aspect, the charisma. Like I watched uh, growing up, I all I did watch I he was able to befriend anybody. He started come. He find some common link, you know, connection with anybody. Doesn't matter where you at. Just start saying stories and talking, and just rejoice, overjoyous all the time. So I took that on. And my mom, you know, Stone Cold. She's from the South, you know, Florida. So she, you know, made me the tough, you no know, skin that I got now to keep going and you know keep persevering. And no matter what challenges come at me, I'm gonna keep going through it. Uh, so I'm I'm really a, a, a you know a melting pot. Both of them. Uh, you know, my dad's from Brooklyn. And uh, I'm just thankful that, you know, to have them, you know, behind me and always, I'm 30 years old, I'm still my mom's baby, you know, I'm still her little baby, you know, no matter what, BJ, uh, and, you know, my dad always called me, you know, dropping jewels and knowledge, and it's helped me, you know, throughout this process, and um, I was so happy, I'll tell you this, one moment that I got, I didn't notice that they, when, uh, like I talked about when I went to today's show, and it streamed it, I didn't know they was going to bring my parents on, uh, so, you know, I kind of went down there by Ooh. myself, you know, just, you know, hey, all right, you know, I'm here, a little nervous, but you know, I'm here. And then, uh, you know, Donna, she's like, hey, I got some special people here, just come on. And I got to see my mom smile and that big laugh. And my dad was just so cool, you know, cool, just walk all smooth. Yeah. And <laughs> He's playing too cool in school, but my mom, big smile, you can tell. And that was a, a beautiful moment that I got to share with my parents. It's like, you know, I got to see all my, you know, students and their families and how they celebrate and all that good stuff. It, it was special. So I would say definitely my dad and my mom. Uh, the biggest influencers in my life. Megan and you? Yeah. So gosh, I mean, same answer. Um, my mom, Barry's met with my parents too. So my mom would, uh, I would say like, if, as I think about what allowed me to be um, the leader that, that I, that I was and that I like continue to strive to be, it's like that, that head and heart balance. Right. So the head part is all my dad um, taught me like drive and taught me 
how to, you know, calmly kind of set a plan and make it happen and stay committed to it. Right. Super hardworking guy. Um, my mom is like intuitive and perceptive and so heart driven. Um, and as I think about, you know, what I needed to tap into to do this work, it was absolutely and has always been um, taking from from both of them and just modeling after the blend. Um, and yeah, they're wonderful. And they used to they knew that Ashley Park was a complete labor of love for me. And um, they supported me through that so beautifully, like in in uh, not hearing from me for weeks at a time and then and, and hearing from me excessively when I was like maybe going through something stressful. And Barry knows they used to come every summer and put up all the bulletin boards in the school for the yep. teachers. And then like mm -hmm. there was construction at the school. My dad worked in construction. So he came and like supervised it, like wanted to check in on how <laughs> it was going. Um, and so like I loved the way that they saw how deeply important it was to me and like really wanted to be like in it to the extent that that was um, normal or appropriate for parents, but like loved my kids alongside me um, and have just been, yeah, amazingly supportive. So ever grateful for them. I think it's amazing that uh, it, we always get a, a bad rap, I think, with, with kids that are troubled, I guess you could say, because nobody looks behind. There's a story behind every situation, whether it be considered negative, whether it be considered positive as well. Um, and I've never met a positive person in my entire life that really had an easy childhood. You know they're they're as good as they are right now because they persevered because they've had a person in their corner because they've actually had to go through those learning curves and they've learned from it as well um and i would just wish we lived in a world where there's more teachers and educators like people like yourself who actually take your egos put it aside for a second and realize that there's something bigger than me that we're talking about here in the, in the terms of education uh, because the ripple effect of what happens inside of schools, I mean, it's just, it's, it's exponential. Um, so, Barry, I want to ask you before we go, um, I always say opportunity strikes people who are ready for it, uh, and it ruins people who aren't ready for it. And you spent, you know, I guess you were 25 when you went boom online as well, and it hit you. Uh, how did that success and that notoriety uh, really fall in line with uh, your character, what you did moving forward, and what you're doing now. Yeah. So, so the great thing about that, and uh, you know, Megan attested is, is um, so what people got to see on a more, you know, a massive national scale was something that we was doing every day. That we started doing, uh, whether that was me with my step team on uh, the basketball team, or just um, in the hallway, just coming up with some fun things uh, with my team. And I want to say this too. Uh, I can't be remiss about to say this point. I had such a phenomenal team. Like, and Megan knows I had such mm -hmm. a Mr. Clifton. I had uh, Miss Pierce was the first, you know, uh, with a first teammate. And then, of course, um, after that, we had uh, another teammate then. But just that year, I think uh, alone, just when you think about the team and the energy and chemistry that we had, that's what allowed me. To, to, uh, to be what I am and our kids to be what they be, we fed off each other. So a lot of that infrastructure that we talked about doesn't happen if if you go from my classroom and then in Mr. Clifton's classroom, is not some amazing thing going on. Like it's not the phenomenal math songs, all it. So they literally that year, uh, you know, I was with my team, they went from classroom to classroom, classroom and had such an amazing experience. Like uh, literally you, you come down the hallway you might think he was at a concert. Like if, if it wasn't me, it was Mr. Clifton. <laughs> it wasn't Clifton. It was Miss Pierce. Like it was like it was all three, and they kept and they rotated. They rotated. So imagine that you know just having that solid teamwork. And then Megan, talk, I went to Megan. Um, I don't remember this, Megan. I went to you and said, "Listen, I'm so thankful to have this team this year. I was so yeah. really like we our chemistry met so much. Even to this day, I you know thought Miss Clifton and Miss Pierce and then uh, Pierce and all that." It just, you know, a lot of those amazing videos you saw was a collection of us coming together and say, okay, let's put this, let's put this together, put that together for our students, for what, what do they want as a unit? And we were able to bridge not just our class, but we brought the whole fifth grade family, you know, together. So I think that was powerful just in itself. Um, and I forgot your original question. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> what was the original question? <laughs> You're muted, Chuck. <laughs> I said, I was going to say, I don't know. I don't pay attention to me. Else does. <laughs> what the oh, hell? I got you. I got no, you. I, was, I, was, I was asking you about, um, obviously, you came into the opportunity. You, yeah. you, you, yeah. you did. You had a, a support structure behind you as well that was able to yeah. catch you and be able to facilitate what you had. 
Yeah, so answer that question. Yes, how did I, I manage that in those five, you know, six years? It's still going on now. Well, I told a lot of my friends, again, it was that strong support system that was behind me. And I've always, my students always kept me grounded. It don't matter what I was a part of. No matter what TV show I was on, no matter what I did, I always came back to my, you know, my little 11 and 12 year old. I'll tell you this, right after I came back from the Today Show um, and Megan News, the next day I was flew right back. I was there at 6 a.m., papers on the thing, getting all that. And the kids walked in. Now, you know, I'm expecting them to go, you know, oh, Mr. White's up. Immediately. The only thing they cared about, Mr. White, you did the dance wrong. I did the little shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you did the dance. They were my teachers. They're the ones that were teaching me all the cool, the floss, all that good stuff. That's what they cared about. They just cared. That's so like I was there, their mind. That's all we cared about. But they always kept me grounded because at the end of the day, um, I come back in my classroom. I got my students in front of me, and I'm going to have some 10 year asking me, Hey, can my stomach's hurting? Like, what can I do? I have to adhere to them, I have to care for them. So, that was always my leveler, regardless of whatever I did. It was, and that's how I managed all these years. And that's what it's always about. It's always about, you know, my kids. And now it's about, you know, it's an extension of me now about my teachers that, you know, that I'm leading, that I want to pour into, that I want to support. Cause they're supporting uh, a massive of kids. So just expanding that reach. And that's what um, it's always about me, always about for me and will maintain uh, to be about for me going forward. And that's how I manage it. We've got a couple of minutes before we finish the show, but I just wanted to uh, give you guys a chance to say, update us what you're doing now, where you're going vision wise, what it looks like moving forward. Obviously I know it's COVID, but uh, Megan, we'll start with you and then Barry will give you the final word. Yeah, so I'm only in my second year working for CT3 and getting, so so the current excitement for me and, and looking ahead is I've built these relationships virtually with, with these leaders across the country um, and powerful nonetheless, you know, just in the same way we see how well kids can connect with teachers online, like how possible that is. Um, I feel like I've gotten to know these people and their staffs and seen progress with them and, and just wanted to be with them in person so badly. So for me right now, it's kind of like wrapping up the formality of, you know, ending a school year in that contract, but then also getting ready to, um, to tee them up next year and support them in whatever way they're ready for and get on the ground with them and just to not be with kids and to not be in schools is, is really hard. And I know we're all experiencing that in different ways. Um, but as a, a partner, I've not been, I've not been allowed in yet. So um, I'll get to be in schools again in August. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. And like, in, in what's most ahead for me right now and love CT3 thankful for the impact. So um, they're, they're my plan for now. Awesome. Barry yourself. Yeah, so right now, uh, similar to Megan, I I'm just looking forward to a full school year, um, you know, with scholars, uh, students in the building, and just being able to have a full year of building, you know, from scratch. And I'm, my focus really now is, I mean, it's been before, but it's really emphasis on social emotional learning. Uh, like, that's been my charge this year for myself, like one of the pillars that I wanted to tackle on, um, especially during the pandemic and remote and all the effects that's happening. Uh, not just students, but teachers as well. So I've really been you know, implementing different strategies and innovative ways to try to tackle that. Like I just, um, I mean, Carly created a whole SEO deck, right? So I was just trying to take little things that I've learned like over time, how can I appeal to my students right now? Other than me just saying, yeah, you should breathe more, right? Like how can I make it appealing, <laughs> make it exciting, you know, just in, like to bring them in, to you know, draw them in. So, you know, we design like, you know, little fun uh, deck cards and, and games. And I'm really t trying to take that to the you know, next level to really target their, you know, such much more on their emotional regulation, self-awareness, some efficacy. Th those are my things that I'm excited mostly about to um, really tackle and see what comes of it as far as building their character and building them as human beings, uh, you know, above anything else. I, uh, I spent the weekend kind of geeking out on your YouTube channel. So, you know, you and I, you don't know how tight we are right now, but, you know, we're tight <laughs> because, like, we spend hours, you know, I spent more more hours with you than I did with my girlfriend this weekend. So, like, <laughs> it's fair to say that we got a bit of a bromance going on on YouTube as well. But what I was saying, everybody out there, if you get a chance to watch Barry White Jr.'s YouTube channel, uh, there's a ton of amazing, uplifting content. Uh, content. And if you're ever having a bad day or you're a teacher and you're looking for a little bit more inspiration or direction or motivation, uh, please go to his YouTube channel as well and check that out. It not only will it brighten your day, it just may have the effect of brightening someone else's day too. And that's what we're all thinking about here as well. So I, uh, I want to thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Uh, Barry, I apologize for cutting half our interview short with you, but I wanted to bring in 
that mentor that you spoke so highly Absolutely. about with Megan <laughs> as well. Uh, you know, and I think we need more kindness and more energy of, of giving and uh, inspiration in this world. And you guys have been fantastic for that. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being on the show. Well, thanks, hey, Chuck. Thank thanks for having me. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, you for bringing Megan on. Like, it's amazing. Like I said, I don't get to you know see you a lot. Oh, Barry, it's a pleasure. This is really fun. Yeah, my uh, my staff is sneaky that way, Barry. You never know what, <laughs> what's going to happen behind the scenes as well. So we're going to have you guys back on the show real soon as well because like you're now into the cockles of my heart as well, and now, now I'm tied to you. So we're we're six degrees of Kevin Bacon now. Uh, moving forward. <laughs> That's our guest, Barry White Jr. and Megan Loftus as well. Thank you very much for joining us tonight as well on Mental Health Monday. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this show. I tried to make this as light and obviously uplifting uh, with the guests that I have that were just fantastic as well. It's always great to see inspiration when it's out there. And when you recognize it, please give it a space. Give it some, give it some wheels. Give it some transmission to get to the back of the car and drive that for people who, who are out there who who you don't know are suffering, but could use that enlightenment as well. So um, yeah, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm overjoyed with the comments as well. And I'm, I apologize for not being able to get to all of them guys as well on the side. Uh, every single show that we have here is just so much content. And I would just be, uh, you know, behind if I didn't actually give them the spotlight of being able to go there. I'll try and answer your questions afterwards and, and going through all this. So. Thank you for the support of the channel. Uh, if you like the show, please feel free to share it on your social media platforms as well. And please check out Barry White's platform on YouTube. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week on Mental Health Monday. Thanks. I'm Jeff Bastard.